This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Last year, we reported that Tesla was working on refreshing the design of the Model 3 and Y. We even learned the code names. The Model 3 refresh was called Highland, and the Y was called Juniper. The Model 3 refresh launched in China last September before going to other markets. But now we're learning that there won't be any refresh of the Model Y this year in either the U.S. or China. And you know what that likely means. Without anything new to offer, the only way that Tesla can really lure more people to look at a Model Y is by cutting the price. And sure enough, yesterday Tesla cut prices of some models of the Y by about $1,000. Only four automakers aired commercials during the Super Bowl. Volkswagen, Kia, BMW, and Toyota. But they were a hit with consumers and helped drive interest in the brands, especially VW, who teased the new electric bus, the ID Buzz. The German automaker generated the biggest increase in search traffic on Cars.com, Kelly Blue Book, and Auto Trader. VW also had the third highest engagement amongst all the advertisers according to EDO Inc., an analytics company that measures traffic searches when ads are aired. Meanwhile, Kia's ad ranked third in the USA Today list of most popular ads, and BMW's was at number seven. And Toyota's ad helped boost traffic on Cars.com and Edmunds websites. Among the auto brands, EDO says VW accounted for 69% of search activity after the ads aired, Kia was next at 15%, followed by Toyota at 10%, and BMW at 6%. There was another auto-related commercial that aired during the Super Bowl that garnered a lot of attention. A group called the Dawn Project ran two ads criticizing the safety of Tesla's autopilot system. But one of them drew the ire of the National Transportation Safety Board for using its logo without its permission. The NTSB put out a statement saying it, quote, had no involvement in the production of this advertisement, did not authorize the use of its seal, nor does it endorse the work of the Dawn Project. So the agency asked the group to remove its logo from the ad, which it did. When GM first introduced the Chevy Equinox EV, it promised a base price of $30,000, but the automaker just confirmed it's going to cost a bit more than that. The front-wheel drive 1LT version starts at $34,995, including destination charges. But the model also qualifies for the $7,500 federal tax credit, which will drop the price to $27,495 for eligible buyers. The model has an estimated 300-plus miles of range and will be available later this year. GM also confirmed that the all-wheel drive Equinox EV will have an EPA-estimated 285 miles of range, but it did not reveal pricing for those models. According to Auto Forecast Solutions, the Equinox EV goes into production in June at GM's plant in San Luis Potosi in Mexico. Toyota is laying down the hammer at its Daihatsu subsidiary over a safety scandal. The company replaced the top leadership at Daihatsu with Toyota executives. Daihatsu's chairman and president are resigning, and Toyota is abolishing the chairman position altogether. Toyota will also bring some of Daihatsu's overseas operations into its own and refocus Daihatsu's business on mini cars. Toyota is making the changes at Daihatsu because an independent investigation found that it rigged safety tests on 64 nameplates over three decades, including Toyota vehicles. And last year, Daihatsu was forced to suspend shipments of all of its models. Toyota blames growing Daihatsu too fast over the last several years for the issues because it overstretched its development and production resources. Chrysler revealed an all-new electric sedan concept called the Halcyon. If Stellantis hadn't pulled out a CES, this would have been the vehicle it would have shown there. 
It's based on the Stella Large Platform and features future technology like an 800-volt lithium sulfur battery, inductive road charging, and autonomous driving. But we got a chance to check out the Halcyon in person, and it seems more like a preview of future styling elements that it will incorporate into production models and technologies that it's pursuing. The car itself was too small. I'm tall, but my head stuck above the roof line, and I wouldn't have fit if the roof didn't fold up and out of the way. It also didn't look like there was a battery in the floor, so if this car ever gets built, it will be a lot taller. Plus, autonomous driving with fold-away steering wheels seems like a far-off tech. No one is making lithium sulfur batteries for EVs in volume production yet, and there's only one public road in the U.S. that I'm aware of that has built-in inductive road charging. Even still, I think you can take a lot away from the design, and we can see how this could be massaged into a future production car. Things like the simplicity of the styling, the lighting signatures, the new Chrysler logo, the fast back roof line, the wheels, as well as other little styling elements. The brand says it will have an all-electric lineup by 2028, but it doesn't say when or if we'll see a vehicle like Halcyon. It will have an all-new, all-electric CUV based on the Stella Large platform that launches next year, which is a good thing. With production of the 300 ending last year, Chrysler only makes the Pacifica minivan right now. And sticking with Stellantis for a moment, it says it will adopt the SAE J3400 charging connector on some of its EVs next year. You may not have heard of J3400, but you know what it is. It's Tesla's charger, or what it calls the North American Charging Standard, or NACS for short. However, Stellantis makes no mention of Tesla or NACS, so its vehicles may not have access to supercharger stations. But it's partnered with six other automakers to launch the Iona Charging Network in North America, which will feature NACS connectors. BYD is on a tear. It ended up last year as the biggest car company in China and sells more pure electric cars in the country than Tesla does. So meet the BYD Seagull, the company's best-selling car, which goes for about 11 grand in China. And now BYD is launching it in South America, first in Uruguay, probably followed by Brazil. But in South America, BYD is calling it the Dolphin Mini, and it's raising the price significantly, even though the car is still a bargain. There are two versions of this four-door hatchback. A 30 kilowatt hour battery pack that delivers 305 kilometers of range, according to China's CLTC test procedure, starts at 20 grand. A 38.8 kilowatt hour pack with 405 kilometers of range starts at $23,000. The car gets a 55 kilowatt electric motor that has 135 newton meters of torque. That converts to 99 horsepower and 99 pound feet of torque. But let's go back to those range numbers for a moment and convert them to miles and roughly calculate how they perform on the EPA test, which is much more stringent than what's used in China or Europe. The 30 kilowatt hour pack would likely deliver around 123 miles of EPA range, while the 38.8 kilowatt hour pack would be about 163 miles. One reason the car is so inexpensive is that it would never meet U.S. crash standards. The people at CareSoft, who specialize in benchmarking and cost comparisons, estimate the BYD Seagull would need another $4,000 worth of structural improvements to meet U.S. standards. And speaking of CareSoft, they're about to begin a deep dive into a Tesla Cybertruck. But before they do, they invited us over to check it out. So of course we jumped at the opportunity. The company's president, Terry Wachowski, also happens to be a former full-size truck executive at GM, as well as a genuine farmer. And he's been putting the cyber truck to work, hauling hay and thousand pound loads of horse feed. And since Terry knows trucks and truck buyers, we felt like the million dollar question for him was, are people who actually use trucks like trucks gonna go for the cyber truck? Here's what he had to say. Uh, many that I know, their first impressions are no. No, I, I have no need for that. I don't want that. Um, and 
you know, early on, you know, in the EV revolution here, mm -hmm. I was kind of on the same mindset. But you know, we've got a lot of tools that we use out on the ranch. And I remember buying the first cordless tools. So hmm, well, let's try this. Got this tool, got this tool. I will never buy another corded tool. Yeah. I just won't. <laughs> right. Now I have chainsaws. I got a whole you know, portfolio of chainsaws for different size jobs out there. And there's trees all the time need, uh, need, need management out there. And I said, well, you know, never get an electric chainsaw. Yeah, you will. Yeah. And it's really nice. I, I've got an electric it's really, chainsaw. It's really Oh, yeah, nice. yeah. Once you have those batteries, you never go back. Yeah. So you think the th same thing could happen I, with I this do. when, when I, I hardcore V8 truck buyers get a chance to really experience, not drive around the block, but I mean, work on a ranch like you have. To do work, you, you think they'll start to change their mind. Sure, I do. I believe that. I thought that was a pretty interesting answer from Terry. And we go through a lot more in that video, like fit and finish, ride and handling, and all the pros and cons of using the Cybertruck like a truck. If you'd like to see more, we'll provide a link in the transcript and description box. That brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone solutions for your journey, and by Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing. Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data.